Thanks everyone for, uh, for having us and coming out. Um, my name is Will Grant. I'm the head of marketing and outreach for Jackal Labs. This is my colleague, uh, Marston Connell, um, and we are Jackal. Um, so to give you a little sort of overview on uh, who we are, so we're an L1 blockchain based in the Cosmos ecosystem, and we build uh, digital privacy and cybersecurity infrastructure for both individuals and businesses alike. So uh, today we're gonna just quickly talk about a little bit of uh, some of the issues that Jackal tries to solve through some of our products and what exactly those products are. So um, qu just quickly, basically one of the main issues that we try and solve is the lack of true decentralized options um, in the internet, both in web two and as we'll argue in web three. So, in the current state of the internet, uh, there's roughly about seven companies that have really consolidated most of the power over the internet um, and have really grabbed quite a price monopoly on both data and the overall flow of information. And below you can sort of see some of the usual uh, suspects that uh, I'm talking about. So what does this mean for you and I, really? Uh, what we think that means is that centralized infrastructure just inherently means security vulnerabilities. What I mean by this is that centralized infrastructure just by nature is not open source. And the problem with that is that an average Joe, like any of us in this room, can't go in and just check on where my data is going anytime it goes through something like Google or Amazon. Um, a lot of the time, especially with advertisements, you're never informed how those advertisement algorithms are created or what they're actually doing behind the scenes with your data to give you those ads. Uh, a lot of the time your data is sold and they don't ever explain who it's, sell who it's being sold to or when it's being sold and at any point random people all around the world could have your data without you ever knowing. Finally, uh, you are never really told how your data is being secured on their systems and so when you trust these third party centralized systems with your username and password, you're trusting them to make sure that your username and password are safe. Uh, a lot of the time we see that with data breaches where they're not doing a very good job of keeping your username and password safe, unfortunately. So it's, it's easy enough to say that it's profitable for these companies to engage in these, um, these actions. But basically there's, there's three sub reasons why they do that. And obviously they're, they're, they're pretty clear, but firstly, um, the more data they have on the individual, the better their chance of retaining a customer and making them a frequent customer may be. Um, you know, second, um, why do companies like Meta, Google retain all of your data? Well, the more they know about you, the customer, the better experience they can give you when using their application, product, whatever it may be. Um, and then thirdly, obviously, um, mining your data is incredibly profitable. So in North America, um, the average adult their monthly data sold on the open, open market is roughly about $35 on average. So um, pretty lucrative to say the least. So it goes without saying that we should really do something to um, mitigate this, this issue. Um, obviously it's, it's not just about um, making sure that the rich don't get richer, but this issue of uh, a lack of decentralized options um, creates a serious issue for both individuals and society. So um, I won't go into every single one of these instances, but essentially when you spend so much time in this digital world that is tailored around you um, based on your data preferences and your history, um, the real world becomes increasingly perverse and hard to deal with. And it's pretty evident when we look at the younger generation um, that that's, that's taking place. So again, like, you know, these, the, the leaders and executives of these companies that are, that are exploiting my data and your data, um, they recognize that um, it's an issue, but quite frankly, it's profitable, so why would they stop? Um, for example, the former VP of user growth at Facebook openly you know, mentions that you know, they don't want their children using it, so you know, why should we? And on top of this, we're dealing with a lot of centralized infrastructure, even going as far as the internet itself is a big centralized point of failure, where we're seeing time and time again government bodies all around the world shutting down internet access for politically motivated reasons, and uh, 
a lot of the time these end up as human rights violations, according to the United Nations, because uh, access to free information is a human right. Uh, between 2005 and 2021, over 70 countries with around 100,000 hours of total downtime have been inflicted by government bodies. And that doesn't sound like a crazy amount of downtime, but when you think that almost everything you do from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed is done on the internet, that is an unfathomable amount of time without internet access. So, you know, not only are we trying to make it the digital landscape, a more even playing field, but really trying to mitigate some of the solvable cybersecurity vulnerabilities that come with a purely centralized infrastructure. So um, at Jackal, with m most of our products and primarily our flagship product, Jackal Storage, we really try to eliminate a lot of these cybersecurity vulnerabilities that are inherent with a centralized structure. So for example, um, removing the need to use an email, password, username, or you know, a phone number or address to identify yourself as a user. Um, as we'll sort of show in the next few slides, our product, Jackal Storage, is able to do so through the use of private keys um, and complete end-to-end -end encryption. So for a lot of us, I imagine we probably think that someone like the Toronto Police as an organization has a really, really high cybersecurity posture. But quite frankly, if you look up on the board, you can see that we've done a search on a publicly open source database surrounding the uh, usernames and passwords of compromised entities, whether that be through leaks, database breaches, all that stuff. And we do a search for the Toronto Police email addresses, and we can find about 1,500 different accounts that were Toronto Police employees that had their information compromised. And furthering this, you can see right here, these two are members of the, the board of the Toronto Police. And you'd think they'd have really, really good cybersecurity postures, but quite frankly, that's their usernames and passwords right up there on the board. We've you know, hidden them for their privacy, but if those guys there don't have good cybersecurity, what about you? Don't arrest us. And another one is the Toronto hospitals. Uh, these are Toronto hospital uh, employees, and you can see about 2,700 search results were found. So that means if any of those people have access to your medical records, uh, right now the whole world does too. So it's easy enough to, for us to come up here and say this is merely a, a Web 2 issue, but I think we'd be remiss not to say that this issue isn't pretty you know, prevalent in Web 3 as well. Um, you know, we, we come to these events and you know, you're, seeing, you, you're interacted with the word decentralized a lot. But you know, what does that really mean? Um, you know, we've come to find that it's a pretty ambiguous term in this space, in this space sorry. And you know, it's um, usually not for um, fault of the, the, the company or the project alone, um, but it really puts into question what necessitates a decentralized um, product. And we can even see that a few days ago, or I think it might have been two days ago, Curve Finance is a really good example of this problem happening where their back end is all decentralized. They're a smart contract on the Ethereum network and a few others, but uh, they use a centralized front end and they use a DNS provider, which is a centralized point of failure. And somebody got access to that through a username and password or something along those lines and was able to redirect every user's request from where they think Curve is being hosted to their own system. And this just goes to show that you're really only as strong as your weakest link. And if you have a centralized front end, quite frankly, your protocol is centralized as well. So how can we help? So obviously, we're not going to solve this entire issue that is um, the leakage of our data. But what we can do is keep these things in mind when building our products. So at Jackal, most of us come from actually a cybersecurity and digital forensics background. So we really recognize the need to um, ensure decentralization is paramount in every product that we build. Um, we really try and make sure that you know, the ethical and humane core values when building um, and interacting with both individuals and enterprise clients um, remains at the forefront of what we do. And ultimately, we, we really just aim to put the power back in the hands of the individual and less so in, in the hands of the, um, the giants that are dominating the industry. So 
to give a little, um, just a little overview of what we do at Jackal, um, most, of, most people know us for our flagship um, product, Jackal Storage, which is currently in testnet. Um, we're hopefully about eight weeks away from launching into mainnet. But we've also launched our Shepherd Web, Ga Shepherd Web Gateway, which is essentially just decentralized um, web hosting, as well as um, Retriever Name Service, which is essentially an ENS comparable um, for the Cosmos ecosystem. So a little bit about Jackal. What is Jackal Storage? Essentially, it is a decentralized private cloud storage platform, very, very similar to how you'd interact with AWS. The only difference is that it is all built with blockchain technology and fully decentralized and private. So a lot of Web3 storage companies that currently exist are not private at all, actually. Uh, if you want to deal with Filecoin, Siacoin, Arweave, any of these big players, you have to encrypt your data before it ever gets sent out there. And that means you manage all of your encryption keys. And if you want to share that data, you have to send an encryption key across usually a public channel, which makes it a very, very messy system. Uh, what Jackal aims to do is we have a decentralized network of hot storage nodes, and before your files ever left your machine, it is fully encrypted, so you can have full privacy on chain. On top of that, it is fully decentralized, as I said, with uh, our decentralized network of nodes, and quite frankly, if you don't care about any of that, it's also cheaper because we are a decentralized network and we can get the best prices from all of our providers. So here's a little snapshot from uh, our Jackal storage product. Um, what we've tried to do is, like I said, maintain that level of decentralization that um, we're working towards without sacrificing the ease of use that comes with products such as you know, a Dropbox or a Google Drive. And so a little bit about that, the context-wise, you get your file, uh, it's fully encrypted on your machine before it ever gets sent to the internet. From there, it's shot over to our decentralized network. All the information about where that file is being kept on our system and all the encryption keys are stored on chain, fully encrypted, so that only you and the people you choose to share it with have that information. And same thing goes for retrieving that file. You basically make a request to our system. You get the file back in its, uh, in its encrypted form from our storage providers. And then from there, you can use all the information that you got from the chain to fully decrypt your file, which again gives you that speed and utility that you get from something like AWS, but fully decentralized and private. So kind of going for the buzzer beater here, because I see 10 seconds left. A lot of questions that we've got this week um, have been whether or not we have a token. Um, Yes, we do have a token. Its primary role is to incentivize our network of nodes. Um, if you want to learn more about um, Jackal Storage, Jackal, and everything that we do, um, we encourage you to uh, go to our website, look us up uh, on, on Twitter, um, any, resources, any resources that we have. Um, check out our economic paper, which explains a little bit in further detail what exactly our token does um, and exactly what our products are. So thanks so much for listening to us. My name's Will. This is Jack, or this is Marston. We are Jackal. Stay safe. <laughs>